Hi, this is John Twalbus from policyviz.com, and today I'm gonna to show you how to build a histogram with individual words, as opposed to just a histogram with abstract bars. What do I mean by creating a histogram with individual words? Well, let me show you what we're going to create in this tutorial. So what I have for this example is the average public school starting time for all the states in the United States. And you can see in the standard histogram here on the left, I have four states where the average starting time is between 7.30 a.m. and 7.55 a.m. There are seven states that start between 7.56 a.m. and 8.01 a.m. and so on and so forth. Alternatively, I could use these two approaches on the right, where instead of using these bars, I'm actually going to use the names of the states, or as in the one on the right, the icon of the state. And so you get a slightly different view of the data. First, you can find your state in these data. I live in Virginia, so I can easily go in and find my state in this histogram. I can also see more of a regional pattern, so that the states in green, the southern states, tend to start earlier in the morning as opposed to the states in the Midwest, which tend to start a little later in the morning. So we can create both of these graphs fairly simply in Excel using nothing more than scatter plots. Now it is possible to combine a bar chart and a scatter plot to create these graphs, but I'm actually gonna do it all with just scatter plots. So let's go over to the data and I'm gonna show you what we're going to create. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to create the data for the graphs and then we'll actually build the graphs themselves. So first we'll notice that the data are set right here from columns A to E. I have the state name, I have the state abbreviation, I have the icon for each state, which I use using the state face font, uh, which is produced by ProPublica. It's a free open source font that you can go download. And to create uh, this little icon, you can see I have a little lookup table over here in these blue cells. So that I have North Carolina is actually represented by the lowercase letter A. You can see here's Calibri right on in column T. North Dakota represented by the lowercase B, Nebraska by lowercase C, and so on and so forth. So to pull that icon over here into my data, I need a little VLOOKUP formula. And if you're not familiar with a VLOOKUP formula, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can learn more about how to create uh, and use these formulas in your own work. But for this particular example, I'm just gonna show you how it works very quickly. I'm looking for Mississippi in column R. You can see I find it down here. And Mississippi in the state face font is represented by the capital letter Y. And so you can see if I go over here and bring in that state face font and change it to state face, I have the little icon for Mississippi. In column D, I have the census region, which I've pulled from the Census Bureau. And then in column E is the actual data. Okay, now to set this up, I need an X dimension and a Y dimension because I'm going to plot these data as a scatter plot and then label each of the points. So what I need to do is I need to group my data into the bins according to the original histogram. So I want four states in the first position. I want seven states in the second position. So to do that, instead of just typing them, uh, hard coding them, I'm actually going to use this little lookup table. And what this lookup table is gonna say is, for states where the average starting time is between 7.30 and 7.55 a.m., assign them the number one. For states that start between 7.56 a.m. and 8.02 a.m., give them the number two, and so on and so forth. And so again, I'm gonna use a little VLOOKUP. This time, it's an approximate match. So again, if you're not familiar with this formula, check out the other videos on my channel. I'm gonna look over in the, in the lookup table. The start time is 7.48, so it's gonna be coded as a number one. If we go down just a little bit for Vermont, you can see it starts at 7.59 a.m., which is in the second position, so it's coded as a number two. So now I have my six groups all the way down in the column F. And now what I need to do is create the Y dimension. And here I just wanna stack the names up in each of these columns. And to do that, I'm gonna use a little if statement. I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. So first, I just hard code a number one here for Alaska. And if I go up, this is where I start my formula. And it's a very simple if formula. And if you're not familiar with if formulas in Excel, they're quite simply, they have three arguments. You evaluate some expression. If that expression is true, you do one thing. And if it's false, you do something else. So in this case, this evaluation is saying, if F1 is different than F51, do one thing. And if it's the same, do something else. So in this case, if they're the same, add one to the previous value. So that's what that's going on here. So you can see it's just going to tick up. And if they're different, as you can see here, when I get to my second group, the second group of five, if they're different, start with the number one. And you can see five is obviously different than six. So it gives me the number one. 
and then I scroll up and you can see now that I have my Y values all set up. So that takes care of the core data. Now we need to think about adding the labels to this particular chart. So let's see what else we have. We have our labels along the X axis. And so here the Y value is just gonna be equal to zero and the X values are gonna go from one to six. And here's the actual label that we'll use in just a moment. Then we're gonna to wanna to have labels above each of these little columns. So we wanna have the number of states in each of these bins, just like we would in a standard histogram. So again, the X values are gonna be equal to one to six. And the Y value, I wanna be just slightly higher than the top state listed in that column. So here I'm gonna use another little formula, a count if formula. So this is gonna count the number of states in each of these bins, and I'm gonna add a 1.5. That's gonna move that point up just a little bit. And so you can see here, I've got four states in this first group. So four states are coded as one here. And so I add a 1.5, and so that's where I get that 5.5 from. And for the label, I do the same thing. Uh, I'm just gonna subtract 1.5 from that calculation and then add a label right next to it uh, with those percentage, uh, with those uh, apostrophes. And then the last thing I need for labeling is the legend. And the legend's gonna sit at the top and you can see I have two, three, four, five for the X dimension and then the top of the graph 16s for the Y dimension. So that's how the data are set up. And hopefully, even if you're a little confused about what happened, now when I pull the graph together, it will become a little more clear. So let's start, we're gonna add all the data first and then we'll add the labels on top. So first thing we're gonna do is the X axis labels. So again, this is just gonna sit along the X axis. I'm gonna select those data. I'll put in a scatter plot and you can see I have X equal to one, two, three, four, five, and six with the Y value equal to zero for all of those points. Now we're going to add the actual data for the states. So I'll select data. And I always like to name my data series. It's especially helpful when I'm gonna have a lot of data series like I will here. So I'll click in the name box and just select X axis labels. Now I'm gonna add a new series here. This will be the start time. So the X values will be labels as X in column F and the Y values will be in column G. And I'm gonna hit okay. And you can see here we have dots representing each of the states. Let's add our other two series. So now we need our total labels. These will be the ones that sit above our list of states. So I'll select that cell for the label, X values here, and Y values are right here. And I will also add the legend. I wanna have it labeled. I wanna have the X values here and I wanna have, as you can see, I mistyped. So sometimes you need to be a little careful about where you actually go in the Excel worksheet. So I got that. And then finally, the Y values right there in column K and I click okay. And you can see here, I've got the blue dots are gonna represent my total labels. The orange dots are going to represent the legend. And I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so you can see how all this pulls together. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add all the labels and then we'll hide all of the markers. So first thing I'm going to do is I don't actually need the X axis uh, uh, labels here, so I'm gonna hide those, um, but I do wanna keep the line. So I'm gonna format the axis and I'm gonna keep the line. So I'll make it a dark gray, but then I'll also hide the labels. So I'm gonna go over here into my format axis menu and click none. And so those labels are gone. And now I'm going to select the green dots. I'll right click and say, add data labels. And here I'll format the data labels by using the value from cells option. If you don't know about the value from cells option, you can see it here. I also have another uh, video specific to using this particular option in Excel. So check that out uh, on the Excel playlist on my YouTube channel. So I'll click this option and I will select the data range and this will be along the X axis and I'll hit okay. And I need to make one little change here. I need to unselect the Y value. I'm gonna put those below those points. You see the little overlap, so I'll just scooch that graph up just a little bit. And so now I've got my X axis labels. Now let's do the states. I'm going to select those. I'm going to right click, same process. I'm going to select the value from cells as my labels and I'll go into column A to select the names of the states. 
I'll get rid of the Y value and I will center those points. I'll do the same thing for the total labels, add the data labels, select value from cells. I'll give them these labels that I've calculated with a formula, get rid of the Y value and center them. And then finally for the legend, I'll do the same thing here. I'm going to keep the label off to the right of the point where it is, uh, but I'll get rid of that Y value. Again, you could combine a bar chart and a scatter plot to do this, but uh, it actually turns out to be a little bit easier if you do it with the scatter plot. So now what do we need to do? Well, let's start getting rid of some of these markers. Now they can be a little tricky to sort of select. How do you grab those pink dots? So I'm going to go into the format tab and go to my drop down menu. And for each one, I'm just going to select and I will select the marker series and I will say none. And I just need to repeat that little process each time to get rid of each of those dots. I'm going to keep the ones for the very top for the legend. I'm going to use that in a second. I don't like that there's all this space here between the chart title and the legend. So I'm going to adjust this vertical axis before I turn it off. I'll change this uh, maybe 16.5. That's probably, that's right at the top there. So I think that's going to work. And now I can delete that axis and I can delete the grid lines and it looks like the chart is coming together. So now let's do a little bit of formatting. So we'll format these labels. I'm gonna make them bold and I'll make them just a little bit bigger. And so you can see they sit up right on top. Now, the last thing is to add the colors here. And this is admittedly a little tedious, um, but there's a few ways to go about doing it. So first thing that we could do is we, if we wanna change the shape here, um, which I like to do for this particular graph, uh, I'm gonna make it a square. I can just go in and I can make this a little bit bigger. Um, I'm also going to get rid of the border around these and now I can change the color and you can see here in my spreadsheet I actually have the colors set up so that I know exactly what I want to do here. So for the Midwest I want this to be the bright blue color. For the Northeast will be orange. The South is going to be green and the West is going to be that pink color. So I'm almost there and now what I need to do uh, is if I want is to change the color of these states corresponding to their region. Now there's a couple ways to do this. You could do this the somewhat tedious way, which is to select and start coloring these by uh, by hand. Um, so I'm in the west here, so or this is the south, so I need to color these in green. And so you can see that you know to do each of these one at a time is a little tedious. There's no there's no doubt it's going to take some time. But there's only 50 values here, so it's not that difficult. An alternative way to do it is to set up your data in multiple series so that you can do it in one way. So as you can see here, I have each series separated out. So each region is separated out into a series. So the Midwest here, Northeast, South, and West. And as you can see, I like to use colors in my spreadsheet cells so I can more easily differentiate each of these uh, different, in this case, these different regions. You'll also notice I have a bunch of NAs in these cells. And because what I'm doing here with these NAs is Excel is going to actually ignore them when I plot them on the chart. And so what I'm trying to do is just separate these out using formulas. I could of course just cut and paste if I wanted, but I think it's a, it's a little bit easier and, and, and ultimately uh, more replicable if I use this with formulas. And so I've created this chart over here. And so you can see when it's separated like this, I have a separate series for each region. And I'll dive in and select data. As you can see, I have a separate uh, separate data series for each region. So if I wanted to simply change this color of the south to uh, this red color, I can do that very quickly simply by just selecting that entire series. So there's a trade-off. You're either going to have to spend a little bit of time in the beginning uh, creating these different series, or you're going to have to spend a little time at the end adding all of your different colors. But as you can see, it's quite simple. It doesn't actually take that much work to go from your standard histogram of just these abstract shapes of bars to going to an approach where you use these names of the states. Now, let's take one more step and let's do this with the icons of the states. So I'm gonna go back to my multiple uh, version here with the multiple series. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually gonna change the value from cells for the reference for these uh, state names. So instead of having, for example, instead of having uh, referencing 
the names here as I have set up over there, I'm just gonna change that to the uh, icon lookup. So instead here of doing the name, I can move this reference over here and drop that formula down. And you can see here that I've got that capital letter Y for Mississippi. So I need to change this font and I'm gonna change it to state face. And now I have the icons. And when I go back over here, I need to change my font in the chart as well. I have my icons. So again, all I need to do is change the reference. You can see here that the hashtag NA is uh, Illinois and Alaska. So in case uh, that's of interest, uh, but all I have to do is change this reference to call the call the right letter, change the font in both. I mean, for my purposes, I like to change it in both versions, in both the uh, chart and the spreadsheet. And so you can see here that everything is just updating automatically. So I don't have to recolor these by hand, which is really nice. So that is one way to add those icons to your chart simply by uh, using those different formulas. And here I probably increase uh, the font size just a little bit to make those icons stick out. So again, that's the way, one way to create a histogram using the names, in this case of states, or of icons. So I hope this tutorial was useful. I hope you'll be able to use this in your own work. So please do check out policyviz.com and all the other videos on my YouTube channel to learn how to visualize your data in more effective and better ways.